necessary. Huh? Sharon? What reason could you possibly have for being here? The chairman gave me her permission to return to my former position as your dormitory's caretaker. Which means I am here to serve you all once more. There may only be a short time left until the end of the year, but I'll make sure you want for nothing during it. I've already started preparing your evening meal, so there's no need to go out and buy anything. Oh, well, how about that? I'm fine with this. We will gladly accept your offer. <laughs> Sharon's cooking's better than whatever grub we could wrestle up together anyway. How do you manage to get permission from Mother in the first place, though? Weren't you helping to rebuild the Reinford Group? I thought the company was getting so many orders in, it was struggling to keep up! Now that Master Gwyn has returned to the company, everything is back in order. He and the Chairman have been speeding through one task after another since he got back. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So the former and current Chairman make quite a team, I see. Boy, I'm starving. Wouldn't mind a drink either. With the weather getting warmer, it's just about time for peak beer season. Huh? What are you guys all gathered out here for? Oh, why are you here? It's a pleasure to see you too, Lady Sarah. I brought a bountiful supply of smoked oysters and sardines. If you'd like a snack to accompany your beer, would you like them alongside your dinner? Uh, damn it. Yes. Hmm. I'm surprised she can just walk around in public like this. You know, considering her affiliation. I'm guessing there's some sort of agreement in place between Reinford and the government to leave her alone. Though, even if there weren't, I can't imagine anything would be able to stop Sharon from doing what she wants. might have eaten too much. It's been so long since we last had Sharon's cooking. She hasn't lost her touch. None of it feels heavy on my stomach at all. Well, that's all my work done for the day. Maybe I should go see how everyone else is doing. Oh, there you are. You look bored, Celine. I guess I am. My work's done at this point. I feel like I aged a few decades as soon as the war came to an end. <laughs> Come on now. Feels a bit strange to be saying it after the fact, but you fought pretty well over in Crossbell. You've really mastered piloting Valimar. I'd like to think so anyway. I feel like I could pull off just about anything with him now. And to think, I couldn't do half as much with him when I was first starting out. You do realize you just admitted you were totally useless, right? <sighs> I wonder if you're gonna be okay without us, you know? Valimar must have drawn the short straw to end up with a budding awakener like you. Thanks for worrying about me all the time, Celine. Excuse me, what makes you think I was worried about you? Just about everything. From what I can tell, you've always worried about me. Back in the beginning, when I didn't know anything about piloting, you were always there to guide me through our battles. I doubt I would have ever come this far if you didn't have my back. So, thank you. For all of it. <sighs> Why do you always have to be like this? There are parts of the legends passed down in the clan that not even Emma and I know about. 
But just bear this one thing in mind. Divine Knights have incredible power, and they can become devils just as easily as they can become gods. Don't worry, I know. And I won't forget. Anyone in my position needs to know the difference between right and wrong. I'm well aware of that. That's fine, then. Anyway, good luck, I guess. If you really need it, I can always come and help out. Masterine, I thought you had already retired for the evening. How would you like for me to put together some supper? I appreciate the offer, but I think I've eaten more than I should have as it is. Your cooking really is delicious, Sharon. I was starting to miss it after not having it for so long. <laughs> it was my pleasure to cook for all of you again, so I pulled out all the stops with this one. Seeing all of you happily indulging my handiwork always makes every second of preparation worth it. <laughs> Is something the matter, Masterine? Oh, I was just thinking about how you haven't changed a bit. I'm not sure it's my place to ask, but is everything all right over at Ouroboros? I can't help but wonder after how things turned out. Vita seems really shocked. I'm afraid I haven't a clue. No word of what's been happening in the society has reached my ears since then. I have no idea where the second anguish is now. Nor do I know what happened regarding the Phantasmal Blaze plan after the Chancellor declared he was taking it over. <sighs> and quite frankly, none of it is my concern. The answers won't change who I am, and it won't suddenly cause me to shift priorities. I am and always will be a proud maid of the Reinford family. Not because of the freedom we enforcers are granted, but because that is simply who I am. Much like how you being the Ashen Chevalier doesn't change how you are also a proud member of Class 7. <laughs> I suppose you're right. And no matter what happens to you in the future, never lose sight of who you really are. It's almost time for me to return to Ruhr. But should you ever need me again, I will gladly rush to your side. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. I'm glad you can stay here for a while longer. sad about leaving the lacrosse club behind? Yeah, I was really into it by the end. I think it'll make for some wonderful memories to look back fondly on in the years to come. I can imagine. Does that mean you're not going to keep up with lacrosse and Ruhr? I don't think I'll be able to. As far as I'm aware, there aren't any local teams I could join. And even if there were, I doubt I'd have the time for sports. Just thinking about how busy I'll be makes my head spin. No, no, scratch that. Being busy is all the more reason I need to make time for exercise. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Helping out with the Reinford group sounds like a recipe for one all-nighter after another. <laughs> Not just yet, actually. I won't be helping until Grandfather shows me the ropes. As I am now, I doubt I'll be able to do much at all in the way of rebuilding the company. But you can bet I'll leave Mother speechless with how much progress I've made in a year's time. <laughs> I'm sure you can if you put your mind to it. And I know Sharon will always be willing to help you out if you need her. She probably would, but then she'd just tell everything she did to Mother. <sighs> Elisa? Oh, don't worry about it. I was just thinking about how blessed I am. I've got a wonderful family, a great club I'm part of, all of you as my classmates. 
Oh, right. It took me a long time to realize the same thing, too. We really are one and the same. Yeah. Elisa. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's nothing, uh, honestly. I'm just feeling a bit emotional all of a sudden. I don't know what's gotten into me. Nothing's wrong, though. I promise. But... Still, let's both make the most of our free day tomorrow. It's the last one we'll ever have as a class. The last thing any of us want to do is end it with regrets. Yeah. Agreed. Let's make it a day to remember for both of us. <laughs> what are you looking at, Laura? <laughs> it's you, Reen. I'll show you. Oh, you and Monica got a picture taken together? You both look so happy in it, too. That we do. Someone in the photography club kindly offered to take it for us. I thought it would make a fine souvenir of my time at the Academy to take away with me. My mirror's on that being Rex. Oh well. It's a nice photo, and he got permission. For once. I never expected you and Monica would get so close. Between her and Fee, you kind of have a knack for becoming the best of friends with the ones you bump heads with first. <laughs> Please, don't say that. I'm truly grateful to both of them for broadening my horizons. Meeting them enriched my life in ways I could have never pictured before. Truly. Coming to this academy was one of the best decisions I've ever made. I didn't realize we'd made such a big impact on you. <laughs> well, you did. And don't mind me, I'm just feeling a little emotional. This isn't like me at all now, is it? There's no harm in a few tears, I suppose. This will be my last time I can relax before my training, after all. Yeah, you're not gonna get much rest in with the training you've got lined up. I won't be learning the Arsaid School's advanced techniques with training any less intense. I have no idea where we'll be conducting said training, but it will no doubt be as perilous as it will be dangerous. I had to spend a month in the Isengard range as part of mine. I don't think a month's going to cut it with what you're doing, though. It goes way beyond your average techniques. Indeed. I'm anticipating that it will take at least half a year, if not more. Father's going to be with me. But with things as difficult as they are, part of me feels guilty for taking up his time. I don't know about that. I think him agreeing to train with you shows how much faith he has in your potential. Besides, in a lot of ways, this might be the best time to do it. That is very true. Oh. What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing at all. Regardless, I'd love to come and visit you should the opportunity present itself. And if it does... I'd like to formally request a duel with you to test how much the two of us have grown. Let's not kid ourselves. We both know who's going to win that duel. But your invitation is all the motivation I need to get plenty of training in myself. Can't have you beating me too badly. I hope you will.
Hmm. Something on your mind, instructor? <laughs> you could say that. I've been mulling over how things are going to be come next month, but all this soul searching is giving me a headache. Well, it'll probably feel strange being back with the guild for the first time in two years. But I bet they'll be glad to have you back. Things are probably going to be rough over there, even with you taking up the bracer life again. No doubts there. I can already see plenty of traveling abroad in my future after what happened over in Crossbow. And I imagine it'll keep getting harder and harder for us bracers to operate here, too. <laughs> What's with that sad puppy look? There's no reason for you to feel ashamed of what you've chosen to do. I'm proud to have a student like you who can stand up and make the tough choices life thrusts on us. Thanks, instructor. I'll try to just grin and bear it for now. That a boy. Sticking it out through the hard times with a smile will put you on the fast track to becoming a great man. Just make sure you don't try to shoulder too much. All that'll do is turn you into a jaded grump. Everything in moderation, okay? Uh, thanks? I haven't joined the Intelligence Division, and I have no plans to. I'm gonna keep responding to their requests, but only if I'm comfortable doing what they're asking. And I can promise you, I'll never do anything that would put me in conflict with the Guild or put innocents' lives at risk. I don't know what the future will bring for me, but that's the creed I want to stand by. <laughs> I know. Don't worry. No matter what happens, you'll always be my student. So go out there, live your life, and grow into such a heartthrob that I won't be able to take my eyes off you. <laughs> well, I'll try. What's up, Milliam? Oh, hey, Reen. It's nothing. I just feel kind of... down. Down? Yeah. I was just thinking about how everyone was at dinner time. Sharon's food was really nice, and we all seemed like we were having a good time. But I don't know. It was weird, like we were all upset but didn't want to let it show. It's been... bugging me. Oh, so that's why. You really have grown so much these past few months. And not just mentally. I think you've gotten a little taller, too. Maybe. About two rage or so? Judging by my specs, I'm not gonna get much taller than this, though. I'm mini million forever and ever. But you never know. Maybe I'll grow up to have boobies so big, I can use them as a shelf like Emma's. <laughs> Something wrong? Nah, not really. So, you've got a new mission starting next month, right? Yep, I've got to go see how things are over out west. Duke Cayenne's been arrested, but it sounds like things are still pretty nuts over there. Oh, but guess what? I might get to go out to Liberal and Rimiferia soon! What is it with you and blabbing classified information? Well, whatever. Just promise me you'll take care of yourself. Be sure to keep in touch. I'll always be right there when you need me, okay? Righto, I promise! That goes double for you, mister. If you need me to bust you out of a jam, just say the word. those seeds you've got there? Yep, Adel gave them to me. They all came from the plants we grew in the gardening club. I'm just looking at what kinds there are here. Really? That's really nice of her. It's kind of like you can take everything you've achieved over the past year with you. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't even going to join a club until Adel found me relaxing and invited me. But I guess it wasn't so bad. 
<laughs> Don't you worry. I'll be sure to check on the gardening club every once in a while just to see how things are going. It would be a shame if all the plants you've spent so long looking after were to wither and die. It doesn't matter. Even if they do, they'll eventually bloom again somewhere else. Kind of like us. When you put it that way, I suppose you're right. Hmm. What's wrong? Nothing. Hmm. This one and... this one should be okay too. What are these for? They're the easiest ones to look after. You can try raising them if you want. Don't worry if they wilt or anything, though. When I've found the others from Zephyr, I'll come back and check if they're still blooming. If they are, you get a pat on the head. <laughs> hey, I thought the head rubbing was my job, but I'll give it my best shot. What are you doing? Oh, hi there, Reen. Well, Dorothy and I decided that we're gonna put together one final collection of stories as a club. Since then, I've been working on a story for the students who will join the club next year. Oh, that sounds neat. Wait, if Dorothy's involved... Uh, the content is totally appropriate for children of all ages, I assure you. Admittedly, Dorothy's own story sounds like it'll have a few of her favorite literary elements, but all in moderation, she assured. <laughs> Not that I'm one to judge. What kind of story are you writing? It's supposed to be a fairy tale. I can't pretend it's 100% original, though. I borrowed some elements from a story I heard as a child. It's going to star a golden unicorn and a pure-hearted maiden. Or at least, that's the plan. Sounds interesting. Can I give it a read when you're done? I'll still be here next year, so if I see any first years who seem like they'd enjoy it, I'll recommend it to them. <laughs> I have to confess, I'm a little embarrassed to let anyone see it, but the whole point of a story is to be read. Hmm. Something wrong? <laughs> no, not at all. I'm sure you and Valimar will be just fine without my help now. Still, if you do need anything, don't hesitate to get in touch. It may take some time to contact me, though. You'll need to use a method that isn't exactly conventional. Yeah, I could have guessed as much. I mean, I theoretically get how to use runes to communicate since you told me, but I have no idea how it actually works. I'd be shocked if you did. It's pretty far removed from the horrible technology you're used to. It has its benefits, though. For one, you'll be able to reach me no matter where I might be. So don't ever hesitate to drop me a line if you need my assistance. I'd always be happy to hear from you. Alright. I'm sure I'll give you a ring. Or a rune, I guess. I hope you end up being able to find Vita, too. Thank you. Here's Crow's room. I think I'll stay away from it for now. I feel more like going around and talking to everyone. Are you finishing up your painting, guys? Yeah, this is my last one. I want to make sure I'm completely satisfied with it before declaring it finished. That's understandable. You're going to keep painting once you're back at home though, right? Well, I don't know how much time I'll have to set aside for it, but I intend to keep working on it, bit by bit. There's growing reason for concern in Calvert to the east of the Highlands. But all in all, things are more peaceful now than they were. I should be able to focus on painting my magnum opus. Oh, is it going to be ignored? 
If anyone can make a masterpiece of the Highlands, it'd be you. <laughs> that wouldn't be such a bad idea. But actually, I was intending to paint a picture of the Academy, its students, and the courageous. You mean... Now you're getting it. I want to capture the day we liberated the Academy. And once I've finished it, I fully intend to return to Erebonia with it in hand. What better way to forever memorialize this place as my second homeland? Man, you really are amazing. Well, if you ever need reference materials, you know who to call. I can get pictures of anything you might need and send them over. I know you're talented, but that's a lot to paint off of just your memory. <laughs> I'd appreciate that. Hey, Machius! Working hard or hard? <laughs> I'll stop you right there. Of course I'm hard at work. Just look at the size of this book! If I can't internalize as much of it as possible while I'm here, I'm doomed to failure from the start. And this is one of your new textbooks? Man, Heimdall's political academies don't mess around, do they? You'll be the youngest person there, right? Most likely. I'd normally need to have graduated from Thor's with a bit more experience under my belt to have gotten in. There are a few Thor's grads there already, though. They take some every year. And as you might imagine, the recent political upheaval has the place swarming with applicants this year. The entrance exam was hard enough on its own, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Can't say I envy you. Still, I know you're going to be just fine. You're so smart that you can handle any subject they throw at you. Growing up with your dad should give you a leg up on the politics, too. Yeah, no pressure there. Honestly, there are times when I think diving into things headfirst like this is a giant mistake. <sighs> What's wrong? Oh, it's nothing. It's just... I know we're probably going to both be really busy with our own lives come spring, but let's make time to have lunch together once in a while or something. Okay? Studying is all well and good, but even I need a change of pace every now and again. <laughs> I think that can be arranged. The train from here to Heimdall only takes a half hour. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't hang out sometimes. Then it's a date. Hey, Elliot. Taking care of your violin? Yeah, it's taken care of me over the past year, so why not return the favor? I'm actually planning on giving a few of them to the Academy before I go. Just to make sure next year's first years have something to practice with. That's really generous, and sure to make a lot of people happy. And you'll finally be heading off to a music academy, just like you always wanted. I bet they'll push you pretty hard over there, too. I don't doubt it. I'm going to need to be all music all the time if I want to stand a chance at keeping up. Though, to be honest, after all the time I've spent here, I don't really want my life to be completely about music. I love it, obviously, but to be a balanced person, I want to have a bit more variety in my life, like I had here at the Academy. For one thing, I don't want to get too rusty with my orbital staff. Good to hear. I hope everything works out for you. Thanks. Me too. Uh... Hmm? No, it's nothing. Either way, Heimdall and Trista are really close, so don't be a stranger, okay? I know you're gonna have tons of work to get through between your classes and your missions, but... Don't worry, I'll make time. I'm sure we'll have plenty of chances to see each other. There's still a ton of Heimdall I haven't seen, too. You'll have to show me around next time I make it over there. You bet.
Something on your mind, Yusus? For the first time in a long time, no. I'm just taking a short break. <sighs> Looking over an endless sea of documents can be rather tiring on the eyes. Oh, are those the tax reports you mentioned? Ordinarily, this would be my father's work, but His Majesty has yet to decide his fate. Rufus hasn't so much as glanced in Berea Hard's direction since he took his new job in Crossbell, either. As such, the task falls to me. Man, I knew everyone in our class had it pretty rough right now. But you've got it roughest, no contest. <laughs> if my ego had its way, I would boast that filling in for my father is a simple and mundane task. But on top of the paperwork, I'll need to manage the provincial army and oversee the province as a whole. Then there's the matter of keeping the most stubborn of the nobility in check. I don't expect the first six months to be pleasant. <laughs> the fact that you're already thinking six months ahead is pretty impressive as it is. Standing in for Duke Alborea like that must take some real confidence. I know you'll manage, though. <laughs> that much is obvious. Hmm. While it wouldn't be ideal, I'm sure that Arnal could ostensibly take care of most of my father's duties as well. I can't imagine the city would feel too major of an impact were I to spend an extra year. Stop. As much as I'd like that, it's not what's best for either of us. Or Berea Hart. Mm. The best thing we could do now is go our separate ways. Both for the greater good and for growing as people and as nobles. We only get one life. One shot at this. We might as well try to make the most of the time we have, right? The same holds true for all of our other classmates, too. Perhaps you're right. Given that my father and brother are in no position to do so, I'm currently the only one who can run Berea hard in the long term. I'm just as certain of that as ever, and now I feel the weight of responsibility even more keenly. As I've told you before, you've always struck me as a danger to yourself. It seems all too likely to me that people will continue to use you for their personal gain until there's nothing left of you. Even so, I hope you can show me that you can take care of yourself, even while I'm far away. If your pride as a noble never falters, and you can maintain faith in yourself, however, that shouldn't be an issue. Thanks, Yusis. I won't forget that. See that you don't.
Sunday, stay.
In finance, the annexation of Crossbell has seen shares in Erebonian companies increase at an exponential rate across the board. And despite the Reinford Group announcing sweeping changes to its board members, its strong forecast for the next fiscal year is... It's time for the start of a brand new program here on Radio Trista, coming at you promptly every Sunday. I call it Aubin Time after the word for evening. Might be a little cliched, but sometimes simple is best, right? Cliches are cliches for a reason, after all. Anyway, my name is Misty, and I'll be your host. Um, this is you, isn't it, Reem? Yes, it's me. I'm sorry for calling you like this so late in the evening. I'm not bothering you, am I? Yes, I wasn't going to, but Her Highness insisted. It'll take some getting used to, but it's nice to be able to hear your voice even when you're so far away. <laughs> I didn't have any specific reason for calling. It was just that the letter you sent about your return from Crossbell arrived today. Oh, please don't apologize. I know how busy you must be now. Believe me, I was just happy to hear you were back safe and sound. Your trip must have been exhausting. By the sound of things, you did an excellent job, too. I'm so proud of you, Reen. <laughs> if you say so. <sighs> no, not at all. Regardless, now that I've heard your voice, I feel a lot better. So I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your night now. Oh, there's no need for that. Good night, Reen. Sweet dreams. <laughs> 